Warning, the show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. This show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. This This is Smorgasbord! This is Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm still Mick, and here is my co-host. <laughs> still Angel. And welcome to part two of having dead guests for dinner. Mm. We were trying to do some ooky spooky sounds. Mm. You for see this. my eyebrows? <laughs> for those of you who are watching <laughs> the video, it's pretty spooky. <laughs> It took us like seven takes to try to be spooky, so we just kind of gave up. And we gave up. <laughs> it's not the right season for spooky. It really isn't, I guess. No. So today, so yeah, we're going to cover the second yeah. part of Dead Guests for Dinner. In part one, we covered the Tarajan people, where they're from, what they do, how they get here, a little bit about their religious beliefs, and how they were originally in believing the Aluk Todolo, the way of the ancestors, but now are mostly Christian. And we also covered, I guess, some of their food and how Angel hates them because they all eat rice. <laughs> I don't hate people who eat rice. I mm-hmm. appreciate them. Mm-hmm. I would prefer them to be alive. So you could be openly judged. No, so I can give them all the things that I don't want to eat, but I don't want to you know waste fair enough it makes sense to me i forged (laughs) many friendships over potatoes as in potatoes that i didn't want Hmm. yeah okay fine (laughs) i mean i'm sure you've we've had food before where you're like here mick have the rice and i was yeah grateful you appreciate it say it i appreciate your rice donations all right, good. <laughs> now we can continue. <laughs> <laughs> yes, today we'll continue on learning more about the Tarajan people. If part one, we covered why they keep their rel- their dead relatives in their homes. Today, we're going to cover how they do that and how it is that, that they actually sound... give them a proper burial. It just doesn't sound sanitary. <laughs> just going to throw that out there. The more I read about it, because like we mentioned, it is part of the belief that they want to make sure that they keep the body well taken care of so that the bombo or the spirit can stay healthy and be able to pass to the puya. Because right. of all of this, it actually seems to me that they're super clean. But you can only keep a corpse clean for so long before it just... It's going to go. It's going to go, man. Well, they do preserve it with formaldehyde. So they... If you look at the photos of the dead relatives, they look a lot like mummies at this point. Mm. And do mummies they just have them out stay in the alive open for a while. Do they saran wrap? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're <laughs> not out in the open, if you mean if they're kept outside. They are kept at home, inside. Oh, Sometimes no, I actually like, take them outside. Is there like a jar? <laughs> like a big jar? That they're in? No, they're like... like no? They're just out? There's okay. no, they're not containered. Okay, okay. That's what I meant. Yeah. So, to recap, I guess, yeah, we talked about how the Tarajan people are from Indonesia and the Sulawesi Island. The Tarajan people are mostly Christian, and their dominant religion is the Aluk Todolo. And up to this point, their food sounded good. Yes. Um, Okay. And then both of the religions, both Christian and the Aluk Todolo, believe in the afterlife, and that led into them believing that lives continue on after death which makes them see that dead people are merely sick rather than dead until they're properly buried right that's kind of a good five minute recap Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah when it comes to the dead guests then or the dead family members the Tarajan families would immediately try to preserve their dead bodies like we talked about and prepare them for burial so Today, they would inject family members with formaldehyde to preserve the body. Back in the day, they would actually smoke the body with pine, citrus, and other aromatic plants. Mm-hmm. While the spirit Can you do that with a live person? Smoke them? Yeah. That be would like, be called murder. Kind of like a deodorant. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I don't mean like smother them with smoke. I just mean like maybe waft it their way. I guess so. I like mean, it, it's like when you have a fire. Kind of fresh. Yeah. Like I guess if you have a fire, like you know how you have a fire pit and then you smell like smoke after. So I guess yeah, that would be the same. It's kind of so, like yeah. that. <laughs> so while the spirit itself is called the bombo, the body is called the tomakula. And yes, if you were wondering, it does stink. Sure, mm-hmm. they're, even back then they would smoke the body with pine and citrus and all that, but it still stinks. Oh, yeah. As we covered in part one, they don't believe that the relative is truly dead, but think of them as sick. So these bodies are usually kept indoors rather than outdoors, and but they don't have the containers like you mentioned. They're usually kept in the southernmost room of the Tonkonan, which as we mentioned is like their ancestral or clan home of sorts. This is because of that belief we talked about in part one about the cardinal directions. If the north is seen as the upper world where life begins, the south then is seen as the underworld or where life ends. So you would keep the body of the sick or the dead relative in the southmost area. They are also mm-hmm. faced westward as they are still in transition of life. And west is the direction of the Puya or the land of the dead. So you'd want them to face the direction that they want to be headed. Only when the funeral, or what they call the Rambu Solo, begins that they are allowed to face south and proceed towards the underworld. This tradition of death seems to be rooted for over 900 years into the Tong- into the Tarajan people. Now, while preparing for b- burial, family members would treat the relative as if they were still alive. So this is where the whole inviting the dead guest for dinner comes into play. Yay, sometimes dinner party yeah so they would be they would give them food prepare everything from like the meals f- and drinks for them that they may like or enjoy they would even sometimes give them cigarettes if they smoked they would change their clothes and keep them clean bathe them or wash them however you would wash a formaldehyde-hidden body <laughs> so they eat like any other Tarajan people there's no special dead or sick people food um They just eat like everybody else. They believe that the spirit, which translates, which they would also call the makula, which translates into sick person, is, I guess, sorry, this is a clarification, I guess, from even the last episode. The makula is the spirit until they're buried. And when they're buried, they're called the bombo. Yes. Yeah. So before that, they're just sick. Yeah. So I guess the Mm -hmm. three, just to be clear here with all of it, the body of the dead is called the tomakula. And then the spirit is called the makula, which translates to sick person, until they are buried. And then they're called the bombo. Got it. And this will stay, This makula will stay close to the body, and that's why they believe it needs to be taken care of. So you're actually feeding the makula rather than the tomakula. That's a lot of kula. It's a lot of kool um, You also... Do a lot of number of daily prayers to the Makula as they continue to hang out at home. Now, I'm sure everyone is wondering why on earth they don't just bury their dead relative right then. And rather than just keeping them there if they think they're burying them will help get them to the afterlife. Now, a big reason for that is because the burial ritual itself is seen as the most important ritual in one's life. And these rituals can cost as much as half a million dollars to do. So, as it is pretty expensive, many families then need to save up. Hence why it takes so long to prepare the ritual to bury the dead. Holy crap. This responsibility for preparing all of this falls usually on the mother's side of the family as they believe that the ancestral lineage comes from the mother. The family would actually put everything down to start and save for this so maybe you're saving up for college or you're saving up money to send your daughter to college and your grandma dies all of a sudden <laughs> you ain't getting that, that education, not going girl. education yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah i laugh but that's awful <laughs> yeah but yes yeah, so they see it as such it's so important i guess that they see it mm. as a drop everything and start saving up for this and right I, now, so, what actually is the thing that costs that much? Is it the professionals they're hiring? Yeah. Hi there. My name is Kanyeki Kamawe, and I'm the host of the Represented Podcast. No matter who you are and no matter where you come from, we each have a story to tell. 
The represented podcast explores individuals' life stories with the hope that we can identify with or learn from them. Subscribe and listen to the show on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or even Spotify. You can also check us out on the Geek Happy Network website. That's geekhappynetwork.com. Finally, follow the show on Instagram at Represented Podcast to keep up with the fun stuff. Love to see you there. Peace. So the Rambo Solo or the burial ritual is a pretty big deal. A big part of it is really all the preparations that need to that you need to pay for. Mm-hmm. As it is as we mentioned that they are about the ancestors and the lineage, you'd want to be able to invite all your family there, for example. So you'd want to pay for that. So let's assume that you've saved up enough money for your Rambo Solo, so the preparations will then begin. It's only here then that the body of the relative is seen as dead or rather than sick. Because now we're ready to bury them. They're no longer sick. They're dead. It's seen more of a... One thing to note here though, it's seen as a celebration when you bury or when somebody dies more than it is a ritual or a ceremony. So I think here in North America we tend to fear death. I think for them they tend to celebrate Celebrate. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole village affair, usually held in August or September as well. So that might also cause reason for why your dead relative is hanging out for so long. Because you usually want to do it around that time. The funeral, okay. from as much as I can read, I can't really find a real reason for it. Aside from the weather is nice. The weather is nice might be one thing. Um, there might be something about months that I just didn't see into about how they mm. believe it. Because you know how, I think in Irish mythology, right, they used to believe that the spirits would be closest to the physical world in October, which is why we have mm-hmm. Halloween. Oh, yeah. So it might be something like that. I'm sure there's some kind of traditional belief that ties into all of that. Word. The Rambu Solo itself can last anywhere from one day to a week. This actually depends on your class or your budget. <laughs> Higher the class, the longer the event. The Rambu Solo itself will include some following things that are features that you would see. The Alakian is built, which is a corpse tower that houses the coffin and the body during the ritual. They also tend to create a wooden effigy of the dead called a Tau Tau. It's also, you'll hear a lot of... effigy is a little statue? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I'm like, I don't know that word. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, some some statue of sorts, I think, is the best way, yeah. Okay. You'll also hear a lot of ceremonial drums, and they would also create ceremonial grounds of sorts outside of town, which would be called a Rante. Some common activities that happen during the Rambu Solo are cockfights, dancing, and singing. Mm. Cockfights are uh, chickens fighting. Oh. <laughs> For clarification. As mentioned in part... Do they eat the chickens afterwards if they kill each other? No. I don't think actually f- chicken is not one of the main dishes. They might eat chicken, but I don't think... I know when it comes to price fighting or cockfighting, those chickens are very much used for fighting. Not really the best meat, I think. No, Bad they're meat. probably too muscular. Yeah. <laughs> too stringy. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not a cockfighter, so I would not. <laughs> As mentioned in part... Not a Pokemon champion. Nope. I would use other animals. Other like Pokemon. Like a seal. <laughs> <laughs> arf, arf. Yeah. Um, as we mentioned in part one, it's part of the belief of the Aluk Todolo that there's a difference between humans and animals and the difference is the human's ability to sacrifice. So when it comes to the Rambu Solo, there's a lot of sacrifice that happens during the ritual. The animal of choice for sacrifice, for sacrifice are buffaloes. The number of Aww. buffaloes you sacrifice will demonstrate the grandness of the Rambu Solo. And this is again another comment to show how high you are as a in the class system and sometimes the lower class people who have become successful over the course of their life would try to do a bigger ritual hoping that they could move up to the class the class system when it comes to how many buffaloes 24 seems to be the suggested number for the middle class which is the nobles and the the noble class i guess but some guests may also give buffaloes as gifts 
When it comes to the lowest class of people here, it seems that one day and one pig and maybe one buffalo is what they usually have for their Rambo solo. Man. No, this isn't the... Imagine having that much buffalo where you can just be like, it's time to gift. Yeah. Bring the buffaloes. <laughs> they <laughs> tend to actually... Your closet. Yeah. They tend to buy the buffaloes mo- rather than own the buffaloes. I don't think a lot of people own buffaloes. Uh, nowadays here just keeping them (laughs) just keeping them is yeah you know a lot of space restraints (laughs) that is (laughs) (laughs) um yeah but then when it comes to say the ceremonies also it also depends on the people so like not everybody will have um a funeral this big of course the class is one part of it another is also age so younger humans like kids babies who come out from miscarriages or even just younger kids usually don't have as big a ceremony even if they are higher in class Mm -hmm. some babies are even actually said to be just buried into a hollowed tree the reason for this tree yeah um the reason for this is they believe that the baby can just return back to nature oh okay they're so young that their spirit would rather just come back again (laughs) they're like damn I don't want to be here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Big reset button. Reset. Um, all right. And the flip side of all of this, some higher class people can have as much as 400 buffaloes sacrificed during their funerals. It's a lot of buffalo. Yeah. It's actually really interesting to see the role of buffaloes with the Tarajan people. Because you would usually assume that they would be labor-based animals. Because that's usually how buffaloes are used in this area of the world so you'd usually use it for farming or whatnot but when it comes to the Tarajan people it seems that they don't actually use it for labor it's really just for food and for sacrifice mm. and when it comes to picking the right buffalo that's also a big deal now they're big animals which means they're also not cheap when it comes to picking buffaloes you could spend as much as forty thousand dollars a buffalo Ooh. to buy this so even just that alone, you could start seeing why it takes time to save up for a proper wow. burial. Yeah. The price changes by the quality of the buffalo. And this usually depends on how the skin looks, how long their horns are, blah, blah, blah. General rule for all of this is black is good. Each okay. family of relation to the deceased is expected to actually provide at least one buffalo to the cause. Now, like you mentioned... Um, Buffaloes used to be raised by the Tarajan people, but as more Tarajan people have started to live outside of the island and outside of the Tarajatana, which is the land of Taraja, they have explored lives beyond farming as well, which means that they tend to just import the buffaloes from around Indonesia during these rituals rather than grow or raise buffaloes. Time to hit up Amazon Prime. Yeah. (laughs) Prime that chip. Airdrop me. (laughs) Airdrop me a buffalo. <laughs> Prime me that buffalo. <laughs> it's like what's it um, in Jurassic Park when they were just craning the buffalo over to the velociraptor. <laughs> it's exactly that. <laughs> Drop it on Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. The buffaloes here are seen as so important that they actually f- believe that the more buffaloes you provide to the funeral, the faster the bombo finds the puya wow. once they're buried. The buffaloes themselves are sacrificed by slitting their throats and then beheaded. <laughs> and then the heads are all lined up in the sacri- ceremonial ground. I think they're like lined up in the ceremonial ground or something. Pretty gruesome. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. If you actually see mm-hmm. some of the photos of it, it's... Yeah. It's bloody. <laughs> the bloody buffalo. The sacrificed buffalo is then divided and distributed among the guests to from a platform that they call the Balakayan. Um, before their sacrifice, though, sometimes the buffaloes are made to fight, known as the Maspa Mapasilaga, Mapasilaga Tedong, to show the strength and quality of the buffaloes and to honor the dead. Oh, um, those poor buffalo. Yeah, right? I feel bad. I'm like, oh. At least no. they're helping. They're helping? Yeah. Oh, they're healthy. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> And I think a big part of it, too, is that it's not like they just sacrifice it for, and then just leave the dead body for the dead to eat. It, it is divided and distributed to, 
for the people to be able to consume or mm. eat. So I guess some of it's cooked, some you could take home or whatnot. It's similar to the was one, I guess. Yeah, that's good. Don't do not waste buffalo. Yeah, I, d- I don't think my... it doesn't sound like they waste it. Okay. Okay. Um, aside from buffaloes, as you can see, the buffaloes themselves are pretty much going to rack up your expenses for the funeral already. But other expenses could come from building homes for the guests who are arriving and food for the event and also gifts for the people who are there. At night, the family tends to spend the night in the house of the deceased and it's a social time. Food, games, drinks. Remember Balok, the palm wine for alcoholics? Oh, yeah. <laughs> makes it, that makes it come back. Nice. Apparently, it's also a good time for matchmaking because there are a ton oh, of guests who at come a funeral. who are not family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. it's, it's like I guess the wedding for, <laughs> for the Tarajan people. Four weddings and a funeral. Yeah, four funerals and a wedding. I mean, this is the biggest um, event for them in the human's life, so I guess it's a good time to match make too. <laughs> I mean, you might as well multitask. Yeah, since you already have the people here, you already have the buffaloes. Yeah. Lose one family member, gain another one gain through marriage. Another. Oh yeah. <laughs> On the final day, the body is taken to a mausoleum or a stone grave where they can then begin their journey to the Puya. These mausoleums can look like towers that can tower as high as a hundred feet above the ground. I imagine if those towers are made of pancakes. <laughs> Buffalo pancakes. What? <laughs> <laughs> whenever i think of towers i think of stacks of pancakes okay <laughs> it's just how my brain works oh boy now we're getting hungry again <laughs> and i ate before before we started <laughs> could always eat more oh yeah how do you feel about pancakes at a funeral i feel so okay with it yeah that i would be buried yeah, if in i were dead i would i would demand that my guests eat a lot of pancake i would attend and not just funeral. any yeah but not just any pancake it has to be like it has to be like the fluffy ones yeah the japanese ones Ooh. we have gone off track again the body that's buried in the coffin usually is buried with other valuable objects as well and heirlooms this is believed to aid the loved ones in their journey this is the part where I'm a little bit confused because when I looked at what the stuff they're buried with, it's stuff like bracelets and jewelry and all that, which I'm not sure how that helps in your journey. Like, are you supposed to barter trade with different spirits? <laughs> like, right. Hey, you could get through this uh, gate only if you have a ruby <laughs> and have sacrificed and some pancakes. 10 buffaloes. <laughs> and don't forget 10 the buffaloes with, with pancakes in between each buffalo. <laughs> Yeah, you hit the fourth <laughs> gate. It's like, you bring that, you bring that syrup. <laughs> what? The, the maple syrup. Can I just sidetrack for a sec? Yeah. The, um, the maple syrup from Costco is actually amazing. Really? It's probably my favorite maple syrup that I've ever had. Oh, what's the brand? Kirkland. Really? But not, yeah. Huh. No, it's really good. So, yeah, you should try some. Good to know. Or, ne- you know what? Next time I go, I'm going to buy a giant jug. And then I'll just give you a little nice little bottle. <laughs> Noted. Because there's no way I can eat that much syrup. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have some. Okay. Well, that was the sidebar. Yeah. We can now go back to. So, as we mentioned, there are bracelets and jewelries that's buried with the body. Back in the day they would actually also apparently bury the slave class with the middle class so if someone died from the middle class they would also bury the slaves with them which is kind of terrible oh that's kind of horrible yeah (laughs) but as there are valuable objects here there are grave robbers that do exist so usually when these gifts are created they're usually buried in secret so then people don't really know but i guess now secret's out so Saggy. <laughs> the location of the burial can also be contentious when fighting, when figuring out which Tonkonan to follow. 
So this is what I mentioned. There's some complexities with the Tonkonan or the ancestral home or group about who deserves to get that burial. From what I've seen, usually the higher the class, the better. And the higher the class is usually who will take the person. Unless they hated the person, then maybe not. What's interesting about all of this, though, is the job for taking care of the dead does not end after the funeral. The Rambu Solo is really just the beginning of taking care of the deceased family member. Or I guess more of the end point, because when they die, you take care of them until you reach the burial, and then you do the burial, and then the next step happens, which is the Manene. The what? So it's the Manene. <laughs> I just wanted you to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> the manene is a lifetime responsibility to keep a family member clean. Every one to three years, the family of the deceased would come together to bring the ritual of the manene, which is really just cleaning the deceased family member's grave and body. So you usually dig them out. You, you get dig rid them of, out? Yeah, you do. You give them clean. You usually give them a new set of clothes. Sometimes the family would actually hang out with the body still. Um, eating with them and honoring them. It's its generally just another way to celebrate the life of the dead. You know, you hang out, chill, eat, you honor the dead and remind yourself of the dead. And then once, I think it's just the digging them back out. Yeah. It's a, little, it's a it's whole rough. thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole yeah. ritual. Um, so yeah, you, do, you dig them out because you want to clean them up, give them new clothes, maybe get rid of a few a- animals that might have seeped in. It's also an opportunity for younger family members to then get in touch with their ancestry, which is really, I think, another big reason for this. And yes, there are a lot of photos of the family members taking photos with the dead relative as well. Mm. I saw one with, like, they're just sitting there with their family member and, like, helping assist the family member, the dead family member, with the cigarette. (laughs) It's really interesting. Like a corn cob. Yeah. Cob, corn, corn pipe, corn pipe. Corn. Oh, that, corn. it's like a full on cigarette, cigarette. Not even oh. a pipe. Yeah. You're just going to let it burn. Yeah. The manene itself also happens in August. So I guess you want to time it with all the dead people. I mean, maybe like your family has a one person die every year. So you just kind of clump it together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, August is like a hot month. Yeah. It's. <laughs> gonna go back uncle <laughs> uncle <laughs> uncle fred's gonna get a little stale <laughs> he'd be sweating a little bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, as we are a food podcast we also do want to figure out the food for the funeral this is one of the boring episodes where i found you don't really have a lot of there's not actually some special food or whatnot during the funeral aside from buffalo usually they use the process of pat Poing, which is what we mentioned is cooking using bamboo sticks. So I assume you just use that and cook the buffalo and the rice in there and then you just eat and chill. Um, from how I understand it, the Tarajan people are just pretty chill people. Nothing complicated or complex about all of their lives aside from keeping the dead alive. <laughs> Maybe that's why their life's not complex because they spend a lot of time dealing with the dead. I mean, it sounds like such a process for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it seems like a lot of work, like even before the the ritual happens or Rambu Solo happens, right? You do your daily prayers, you provide them with food, you give them change of clothes, you give them a nice wipe down. It's still like taking care of a sick family member. Mm -hmm. Um, As we do with every episode as well, we ask two big questions. Is it healthy or is it good? Eating your dead family member is probably not healthy. No. Um, keeping them alive. There's diseases that you can get, you know. Yeah. I didn't really see much about it. I'm assuming that whole formaldehyding of them really... Oh, that's also... Isn't formaldehyde not edible? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to eat formaldehyde. <laughs> yeah. I think it kills you. Might knock you yeah. out at least. Um, it might give you some farts. Yeah. Serious farts. But when it comes to the cuisine, it seems healthy. Like, there's nothing... They don't fry stuff. They just yeah. cook everything over the fire, so... They just use too much rice. They don't seem to have a lot of vegetables. <laughs> but they do have a lot of rice. Yeah. This is a rice-centric culture. Yeah. Everything is rice. 
your rice, you I'm rice, we are all, all rice. rice. I'd rather be some other Asian dish, like, you know, a Chinese donut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be a bao They're bun. They're long. A what bun? A bao. A bao bun. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I could see that. Like, sometimes I'd like, maybe I'll just, you know, not exercise and just get fat. <laughs> just be a bao and bun. And just look, fully look like a bao bun. I want to, you know what Chinese donuts look like, right? I do. Yeah. Is they like Twiggy? They're like, a, they're like Asian they're churros. <laughs> yes, that's probably why I like them. Because <laughs> they're churro like. Oh my God. Ooh. You just solved the, a mystery. Because yep. I'm like, they don't actually even taste like anything. They're just deep fried. Oh, but they're so good. Especially the ones when they put it in the sauce with rice um, wrapping or. I know the I know the thing you're talking about. So though. good. Um, yeah. And when it comes to is it good? Sounds like it. Yeah. I, I mean it's a big sacrifice with a lot of buffalo, so if you like buffalo. Which are different from, from bison. North American buffalo. Buffaloes, yeah. Like land buffaloes. Yeah. The water ones are they look like their skin looks real saggy. Yeah. And they have very roundy horns. I just wouldn't expect that they would taste good. They look like they'd be really chewy. Yeah, I think they're gamey. Because even in the Philippines, like we have a lot of water buffaloes, which we call kagabaos, and we don't yeah. really eat them. We still eat cows. Yeah, they don't seem like a food type. Near. Food type of thing. Yeah. I'm sure the dead relatives do find the food that the family provides us good, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do they put food in their mouths and then they do that? <laughs> From how I saw it, it doesn't seem like it. Like, okay. I feel like... They're just there. They're just present. Yeah, they're just present. Like, you give it as a symbol. Like, you provide food to them. It just hangs there and then you take it off after. That's how I'm kind of envisioning all of this. Mm. Yeah. You're not actually shoving food into their faces. Yeah. Because I think for the most part, they're feeding the spirit, which is the... What's it called again? Makula. Yes. Because the body, it's, I think it's feeding the spirit rather than the body. So. Okay. okay. I would like to feed my spirit. Yeah. But I'm no scientist or <laughs> religious historian, apparently. We're none of the anything. We're not professional at any, anything. We have other professions. Such as? But yeah, so that's our episode on dead guests. Would you have a dead guest? Uh, who would be I your dead know, guest? Man. Oh, like the dining table question? Yeah. If you can have one dead person join you for dinner. Just one. Hmm. Would you have one? I would definitely have someone. I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> like someone. Probably. Oh, man. There's so many choices because there's yeah. so many dead people. <laughs> well, Charlie Chaplin was the first name that came in my head. So I guess I'll go with that. You know who the first one that came to my head was? Lennon. Really? Oh. Yeah. Like Wait, John Lennon or Lennon? L-E-N-I-N. Lennon. Communist man. Yeah, L-E-N-I-N? What? Yes. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some questions for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yep. like, yeah. I, I don't even know, like... Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it would be a friend leader. Right. It's just a. I'm curious about you as a human. Yeah. Kind of dinner. Yeah. That's fair. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here for you to tell me about communism. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> it's like, did you know it was gonna spiral the way that it did? In some ways, I I don't know that he thought that far ahead. Yeah. So you'd ask him why, not how. Probably both. Hmm. If we're going to eat a whole water buffalo, <laughs> we have a lot of time to discuss politics, too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. So you would have Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, I'd probably have him. Whom I don't imagine can talk, but that's just because of the era, <laughs> the era yeah. of films that he was in. He's such a physical like <laughs> actor. Yeah. That I would imagine his voice. I don't even want to hear it. I'm just like, come to dinner. Yeah. Do a little dance. 
I'm, trip over the buff the buffalo. <laughs> trip. Now, if we can have our dinners at the same time, he can trip over Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show. <laughs> Dead guests for dinner. The Tarajan people. Yes. Who definitely Lennon and Chaplin are neither. They're they are not not of that region. <laughs> neither Dutch nor Tarajan. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where they're hanging now. No, I have no idea. But I bet you they're not getting anything good to eat. Nope. All right. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> this, this is Smorgasbord. Is have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network. Or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow smorgies. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico.